Hey guys, my name is Scott Niemeyer and I'm the lead pastor of High Point Church right here in Friendswood, Texas. I'd like to welcome you today to our podcast. You know, we believe that church is not just an event that you attend, it really is a family that you belong to. We also believe here that God has a plan for every person on their spiritual journey to know God, to find some freedom from your past so that you can discover your purpose and ultimately you can make a difference. And we exist as a church to help you on that journey. Well, we hope today that you are inspired and encouraged by today's message. Let's jump in and let's get started. Wow, wow, wow. Man, everybody looks so amazing. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look pretty good today. (laughs) Now look at your second choice and say, you too. (laughs) I love it, I love it. Wow, man, it's so great to see everybody here. I know we're super excited uh, about today. Uh, Let me introduce ourselves first. My name is Pastor Scott, and this is my wife, Pastor Kelly. And uh, we have the honor and privilege of pastoring this great church. And uh, I know that today's a big day, really, for us, and uh, a couple of things are going on today. Number one is water baptism is going to happen here at the end of the service, so I'm very excited. There's several people that have said yes, and they're going public with their faith, and man, is there a more powerful thing to witness than that? And so I'm really excited about the end of the service, and then uh, today is a special day for us, and as I begin to kind of ponder, like, is today a good day to do this with baptism or whatever, and Today, we're gonna, we're gonna do church a little bit different. We, we call this Sunday Vision Sunday. And it really is the, the one time of year, it's, it's one Sunday out of the year that we cast vision for where we believe God wants us to go and, and how he wants us to reach people. And uh, the reason that I was a little bit hesitant to do it is I know we have lots of visitors in the house and, and uh, I certainly don't want you to think that every service is just like this one. But then I thought, you know what? We, we always say this, that church is not an event that you attend. It's a family that you belong to. And uh, I, I love to go to family meetings, don't y'all? Come on, somebody. Uh, <laughs> I'm at good family meeting. I'm not talking about an intervention. That's a different type of family meeting, right? Uh, this is not an intervention today. This is, uh, this is a good family meeting, and it's about, it's about vision. And the reason I'm a little hesitant is that I never, ever want any of you to think that church is quantified by by dollars that, is, that are needed to be able to, to, to build a building. But on the other hand, I also want you to know that there's a big vision and a big vessels that we're pushing out. As you heard in the story, and by the way, I think I was a little thinner there. Come on, somebody. How many of, you ever, how many of y'all believe in to lose a little weight right now? I know I am. I'm believing, uh, I'm believing God to lose uh, 20 pounds between now and Thanksgiving so that I can eat well at Thanksgiving. And I'm, I'm happy to report that I only have 30 pounds to go. So it's uh, very, very good. So excited about that. Um, but really wanted you guys to be able to, uh, to kind of pull back uh, the curtain a little bit and kind of let you know where God wants to take us. And in that video, when this whole thing got started, when this whole thing was just a dream in our heart that God had kind of spoke to us about our life making a difference. And I can remember what it looked like to be 45 years old and do something crazy, uh, start a church. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you think that's crazy. Let me just tell you, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, but with that being said, to be able to sit back over the past six and a half years and see all the lives that have been touched and changed and all the people with missions that we've been able to help, it really is an amazing thing. And so we're gonna cast a little bit of vision about from now to the end of the year and uh, we're gonna hopefully give a glimpse of what the next year looks like. Now, in that message, we talked about the story of, of Elisha, and there was a widow woman, and her husband used to work with uh, the man of God, or was, they called it a company of prophets, which means there would be more than one prophet working together. In the Old Testament, that's how people heard from God, the prophet or the, the people of God, the man of God, would stand up as, as the, the mouthpiece for God, and, and he would let the people know, hey, this is what God says. And so this is kind of the dynamic that was going on. Well, her husband had passed away, and uh, she had a problem. She's like, listen, my husband's passed away, and he owed some people, I guess he had some credit out or whatever, owed some people something, and they were coming to take her children, her two boys, as payment for the debt that her dead husband owed. And uh, so the man of God says, well, what do you have? And she says, well, I don't have anything. 
except a little bit of oil in this jar. And he says, okay, go borrow vessels and don't just get a few. So she and her sons go to neighbors and they borrow the vessels. And I'm picturing that they got big vessels. Come on, somebody. And, uh, and so they went and got the vessels and the man of God said, now take them into your house and shut the door behind you and take the little bit of oil and begin to pour it into the big vessels. And it says, as long as they poured, the vessels filled up. So this is a true multiplication miracle where God takes a little and he does something amazing with it. Now, what I've learned through this is when we were believing God in all the steps of vision along the way, God has spoke to us that the way we're to do that is to push out empty vessels. And I'm being honest, the vessel that I feel like God wants us to push out is insane. And I know that you're gonna equate insanity with me. So I'm kind of okay with that, I think. But I do want you to understand that God's got big things for High Point Church. And that we're not building something for next week, we're building something for your grandchildren and for their grandchildren. Something that's gonna be here generations and generations and generations to come. In fact, Friendswood itself is built on faith, family, and education. When the Quakers showed up here over 100 years ago and said, this is what this community is gonna be about. And I love the fact that we're part of the faith story, that we're, we're, we're still putting if you will, oak trees in the ground to be able to rise up and be here generation after generation after generation. And so we wanna share our heart with you about Vision Sunday. We probably have way too much content, but we do, we wanna kind of pull the curtain back. And if you're a guest here today, man, please come back next week. We're gonna be showing a movie and give you popcorn. It's gonna be awesome uh, at the movies this starting. But, but for now, I just wanna kind of have a conversation with you. So we're gonna pray we're gonna kind of just pull up a chair like, a, like, a, like a, a family meeting, if that's okay with you guys. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your word, God. We thank you for vision. God, thank you for big vision. And we ask right now, God, that as we unpack this uh, for the church today, that everybody's heart would be opened up just to see, God, that you're a big God and you wanna do some big things. God, I know that we are not responsible for the outcome of our obedience, we are just responsible to be obedient. And God, I thank you that today, that as we push out empty vessels, God, that, that people's faith would rise up and they would begin to see all that you wanna do. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, yes. amen, amen. Well, we're gonna kind of just pull up a chair, as I said here. There's gonna be some screen support as we kind of go through some of these things. Let me lay a little uh, foundation, scripture foundation for you. And in fact, Kelly's gonna get us started with that. As we talk about vision, how many of you know that if you can see something, you can have it? Nobody knows that. Thank you so much for all the support. How many of you know if you can see something, then you can begin to obtain it? How many of you, how many guys in here have ever wanted a new truck? Come on, somebody. What do y'all do? In the old days, you'd drive by all the lots, you'd get out after hours, you'd go up and walk around, pick just the right one. Now you get online and you search out, hey, what could I have, what could I get? And you would be on the hunt for that truck and you begin to have a vision for that new vehicle. And then pretty soon, you, who comes driving up in that new car? It's you, right? Because you have a vision, you're able to see something beforehand. Well, God actually has a whole lot to say about vision. And what I wanna kinda talk to you today about is vision not just for our church, we're gonna get to that. But I want you to know God has a vision for your life. He has a vision for you. Like he didn't just make you and be like, good luck. No, he's like, no, I put abilities in you, plans and purposes on the inside of you. And, and, and I wanna begin to unpack some of those things and let you understand that God sees you not where you are, but where you could be. And I love the idea of a surrendered life and allowing God to speak vision into your heart and just see where, life, uh, where God can take your life. It's an amazing, amazing thing. But Kelly, get us started with uh, this first scripture in Ephesians. I love this verse. This scripture is, I mean, the more and more I read it, the more revelation I get from it. It's so incredible. And I'm hoping that you can grasp hold of what God is trying to tell us in this scripture. It says, now to him, talking about God, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. So let's stop there for a minute. I am a teacher, and we have two adjectives there, exceedingly abundantly. I mean, like, I would take abundantly. How many of you agree with me? Would you take abundantly? 
Okay, if you raise your hand, that means you're telling God you will take abundantly. That's what I thought. Let's see more hands. Let's go. Okay, I want you to get this illustration here. Now exceed that. That's how much God loves us. We are his children. And it's the same. It's not any different than with us and our children. We want to exceed their hopes and dreams. And he says, I want to exceed abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And there's that think again. What can you see? What do you see? What, it, what are you wanting God to do in your life? What are your dreams? Young people, dream big. Get a vision. Have you heard of vision boards? Yeah, well, the world didn't make that up. That's right here in the Bible. Good. Like, get a vision for your life. That is what you will have. It says, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in Did y'all see that? According to the power that works in us, we have a role to play. We have a role to play to dream God-sized dreams, be, be involved in that by lining up our vision, what we want to do with our personal lives for what God is doing in the greater world. When we come together like this in this, in this partnership with God, then he will exceed abundantly in your life. In fact, you, you really had some revelation about this that, that just was a mind-blowing thing for me to grasp, but I'm so excited about that goes with the scripture about giving God your yes, not just in, in one area of your life, but every time God asks you yet, yeah, like don't think about all the things around. In fact, the Bible also says, don't lean on your own understanding. Just say yes, whatever God has asked you to do. Will you share that with everybody? I know it's not part of our notes, but yeah, it was no, a no, it's game great. changer. It's a great thought. I think in our life, um, I think I've been walking with the Lord long enough in my life to be able to quantify some moments where I felt like God wanted me to do something. Uh, obviously, starting this church was one of those moments. Um, whenever we became youth pastors at a church that we had, had grown up in, uh, that was one of those moments. And I didn't know that that yes meant that there were going to be hundreds, even thousands of young people that would say yes to Jesus over the next 15 years. I didn't know that we were raising up future business people and future teachers and future authors and future, future people, really people in ministry. There are people now that are serving the Lord that came out of that youth group. And, I, and I'm not saying all of that to say anything about us. I just want you to know there's a process that you go through when God begins to deal with you about something. And then you have to get to the place where you, or you begin to say, okay, am I gonna say yes to this or am I gonna say no to this? And in my life, I have learned um, that when I'm faced with this and I believe that it's God, I've decided to push forward instead of pull back. And let me just let you know, it's always easier to pull back. But pushing forward with your yes, what I discovered is it gives you a seat upgrade to see what God is doing. He's like, okay, now that, I'm, now that you're willing to be used by me, I'd like you to come a little bit closer so you can see what's about to happen. And I don't know about you, but to me, that's exciting to know that God wants to use me and show me what he wants to do and that you get a seat up. I remember in 2005, my son Micah, he's now the youth pastor. He was seven years old. And this is the first time the Astros went to the World Series. And uh, we're a little bummed they're not there this year, but maybe next year, all right? 2005, the first time they ever went. And... Uh, we were uh, trying to get some tickets to the World Series game, and I thought, man, this is going to be impossible. First of all, I'm a youth pastor at the time, which means I don't have very much money. Amen? Amen. And so I'm like, okay, how do I get a ticket? So I go online. Standing room only ticket back then was $600. I just picture myself with a seven-year-old on my shoulders for four hours, and I paid 1200 bucks for it. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, oh man, I guess we're not gonna go. And I had a buddy of mine, Brett, I, he, he's here I think right now. His son's just about the same age and we were looking for tickets and couldn't get it. All of a sudden, last minute, this guy calls me and says, hey, do you wanna go to the World Series? I said, I've been trying to get tickets all day. He's like, man, I got four free tickets for you. They're gonna be at the front desk at the end at the ballpark. You just gotta go pick them up. I called Brett, it's like 5.30. I said, we gotta go. We got tickets, baby, let's go. So I get those tickets and I'm, I'm so happy to be able to take my son to experience the World Series game. And so we're walking up to the, the stadium and this guy walks up in a trench coat. It was cold that night, the trench coat, the roof was open, it was beautiful. And uh, he has some, some credentials on and he's not right at the gate. He's like 200 yards from the gate. He's like, hey, can I see your tickets? And I'm like, bro, you don't even know what it took me to get these tickets. But I'm like, okay. So I let him look at my tickets and then he says, uh, hey, I'd like to give you a seat upgrade. 
And I'm like, what do you mean a seat up grab? Thinking, first of all, this dude's trying to take my tickets. Come on, I'm from Baytown. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, we just, we skeptical about everything. I'm like, this guy's trying to take my tickets. Then I, I'm sizing him up. I'm like, I think I could outrun him. If he, if he takes off, I'm, I can get him. He's like, no, I want to I wanna give you a seat upgrade. Are these your boys? I'm like, yeah. I said, he said, oh, we want to we wanna give you a seat upgrade. He walks me to the gate. He says, first of all, do you want it? And I'm like, I'm like, yes. We walk up to the gate. He takes my tickets. He gives me another set of tickets and he gets me in for a sweet level. Come on, somebody. They were bringing us food all night long and we, it was the longest World Series game in baseball history. I don't know if y'all remember that game. It went to like 1.30 in the morning. Micah was asleep in the last four or five innings, but it was a wonderful night. I say, Pastor Scott, why are you telling us a crazy story? Because I said, yes, I got a seat upgrade. I wanna encourage you in your spiritual walk with God to say yes and you'll get a seat upgrade to be able to see what God is doing. Okay, I know I'm totally going off track again, but I have to share this really quick because this just happened this weekend, okay? Off the notes again. Um, we were traveling with some friends of ours here at church, and we actually had the opportunity to see one of the global missions partners that you, being so generous and giving into High Point Missions, and we're going to talk about it in a minute and show a few pictures, but changing lives through Bible translation. And me and my friend got a seat upgrade on the plane. Amen, somebody? But listen to how cool this is, because I never saw this illustration. Now, our sweet husbands, they took the two seats in the back of the plane. But that, the, the flight attendant walked us all the way up to the front seat, sat us down, and we could actually see into the cockpit of what the pilots were doing, of what they were saying, of how they were pro programming the plane and where we were going. Are you getting the, the, the message here? When you say yes to God, you get a seat upgrade. He pulls back the curtain on what he is doing. And that means with our finances, with actually going on mission trips, whatever yeah. that yes is, when, if God asks you to serve in the youth, you're gonna, see a, you're gonna get a seat upgrade of youth, their lives being changed and the yes. stories you're gonna hear. So that's what we're talking about this morning and that's why we wanna give you vision. Great, so Proverbs 29, 18, probably the, the key verse I think about vision is where there is no vision, the people perish. Meaning if you don't have vision for your life, vision for your marriage, vision for your family, vision for your future, and I also believe vision for the church, obviously. If you don't have vision, it says the people perish, meaning that you're, you're gonna spiritually die or you're, you're not ever gonna be able to accomplish anything if you don't have vision for where you wanna go. So vision is a very powerful thing and it really is created by God. Let me give you another verse that I think is great. In Ephesians chapter one, verses 18 and 19, the apostle Paul, and he's a guy that wrote a good part of the new part of the Bible called the New Testament. And uh, he's praying a prayer to, for the church at Ephesus. And this is a, a, a new, it was actually a young church plant, a lot like ours. And he's praying this prayer. And this is the prayer that he prays in, in Ephesians 1, 18 and 19. It says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. What I want you to see is he's not praying for your physical eyes. He's not praying for you to be able to see physically. He's praying for something different, meaning that there's a different set of eyes that God has given us besides the ones that we use physically. There is a set of heart eyes that you can actually begin to use. So he says, I pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. You guys remember the old worship song, 20 something years ago, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. That song is written by this out of this particular verse. So I pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened or opened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. That you'll know that he's called you to something. He's, that you'll know that he's called you to vision. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his saints? That's you and I. What, he's basically looking around and saying, man, what makes, what makes the kingdom of God rich as people? Then he goes on to say this, he says, uh, he says, and what is the surpassing greatness? There's two words again together, not just greatness, but now surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. What's our part is to believe. And then his power is gonna be revealed to us and through us, but it all begins with God, show me what you see. Open the eyes of my heart so I can see further than the natural vision that I have. How many of you know natural vision will talk you out of a yes? Your natural ability to see things will talk you out of greatness every single time. 
You've got to be able to see something beyond what you can see. And how many of you know God is high? The Bible says he is high and lifted up. I mean, you know, if he's high, he has a much better perspective and view than you and I do. You ever been to a football game and sat up on the top row or maybe up in the press box? You can see the field a whole lot better than the players on the field can. Why? Because you've got a, a, you've got a perspective that's different. And God's saying, listen, I got some things I wanna show you guys about your life and about the church. Let's talk about some practical things. I wanna let you know about a few things coming up and then we're gonna kind of shift gears into missions then we're gonna talk about our future building and then uh, uh, I have seven minutes to do that according to that clock. So uh, y'all pray and put your seatbelt on because we're about to go pretty quick, all right? Uh, at the movies, uh, obviously we talked about this already, November the 3rd through the 24th, the next four Sundays in a row is we're gonna take modern day movies, pull out spiritual truths and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna present the love of God through these stories. It's phenomenal, it's fun, it's great and I think it's gonna be an awesome time. You wanna add anything to that? Yeah, I just there, I wanted to tell you why we do at the movies. We don't just do it to have a fun time, which we believe that church should not be endured and we should have a good time, especially being a family. But we are doing this. This is a vision that we got from the very beginning when we launched. And this is one of our outreaches because the stats of people coming into the church are very low. We heard a, I mean, it was actually very heartbreaking, a, st- a statistic that said 50% of the world, 50, that's half, will never step foot inside of a building, but they will go to the movies. Isn't that crazy? I don't know about you, but that's heartbreaking to me. But regardless, what we have done is we have met, we've taken modern day movies, we're putting the word of God, scripture, truth behind it, and every single movie, the point of this series is salvation at the end. This is a salvation series. So invite your friends. Like right now, think of someone on your heart, a, fa- a family member, a coworker that is either was once a believer and is not living for God anymore yep. or just is not a believer and invite them. I want to encourage you, invite them to the movies. How many of y'all know somebody needs Jesus? Come on. <laughs> Listen, God will show you too exactly maybe who you need to invite. And I think a simple invitation sometimes can lead to a life of transformation. And so maybe give a simple invitation and watch what God begins to do. And I want to throw in, in one more thing. We, this is the first year that we've really been um, intentional about this. But the kids point, your children will also have their very own at the movies experience. A lot of these movies are not family friendly. Like we want to get people's attention. So um, we do have an at the movies kids experience for your children, yep. which is exactly like the one in here. Great, great. Uh, next coming up is Christmas Eve. How I many you know Christmas is two months away? Come on, somebody. How many of you guys have already started your Christmas shopping? Oh, really? Wow, look at this. Let's go. Look at all the prepared people. Uh, I love it. So Christmas Eve, we're gonna do um, up our, our experiences uh, options this year. Last year, we had two worship experiences on Christmas and really uh, the place was full of both services. Uh, we're gonna do three worship experiences from you to, for you to choose from. They'll all be exactly the same. It's a candlelight service. Uh, it's special music. We kind of pull out all the stops. It's really a, a fun and intimate time with the Lord. We believe it's gonna be a great blessing to you. So on December 24th, which is Christmas Eve, uh, 11 a.m., 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. are gonna be the times for you to choose from. We're going to have in a couple of weeks uh, an option for you to sign up and pick a service. So you say, Pastor, are, are there tickets that you have to get? They're not tickets, but we wanna know how many people are coming to each service so we can better prepare for that particular service with the kids and different things. And so I wanna encourage you, we'll have information out, but sign up for the service uh, that you wanna attend and there'll be more information about that in the next couple of weeks. And then coming up this weekend, something very exciting to kind of kick off our missions section of this presentation is we have first Saturday serve and first Saturday prayer. So on the first Saturday of every month, you may not know this, but we meet at the new church offices. How many of you guys seen the church offices? Come on, somebody. Somebody put your hands together and give God some, I mean, we're excited about that. Mainly because there's not 10 people meeting in my house when I come out of my bedroom in the morning. Come on, somebody. We're happy about the church offices. Uh, And so uh, we're gonna meet the church office this Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to 10 for corporate prayer. If you wanna come and pray, come and pray about this season that we're going into. We'd love for you to come and pray. Then right after that, we're gonna do Operation Christmas Child, which are the boxes uh, that you see, there's boxes out in the lobby right now. You can pick up and pack a box for either a young, young uh, a child, a girl or a boy. 
uh, and there's some instructions on that. And already you guys have just gone through the lobby the last couple of weeks and picked up like 150 plus boxes that you're gonna pack and bring back next Sunday. Well, the great thing is that you, because of your generosity here, we've already uh, prepared 360 boxes uh, that we're gonna pack at the office on, on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. So it's like an assembly line. We would love for you guys to come out, bring your families out. You say 360 sounds like a lot. It goes super fast. It's all organized. We just kind of pack the boxes. Everybody puts their hands on it. You're praying over it while you're doing it. And these boxes are going literally around the world so that some child can hear the gospel, it's got the gospel message in it, and also get a Christmas present, some Christmas presents uh, from us right here at High Point Church. So I wanna invite you to be a part of that. Um, we are going into a season uh, right now, between now and the end of the year, we call it legacy season. Everybody say legacy. Legacy is really what is gonna be here long after we're gone. You ever, you ever ask yourself like, what legacy are you leaving? Well, I discovered that I could have a bigger impact with legacy if I joined with other people in a legacy vision. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have uh, uh, the opportunity to be able to lay this out. We also have a legacy team here uh, made up of people that have a heart to move the vision of the church forward. If you'd like to be a part of that team, we would love to invite you to be a part of that. Uh, you can get with myself or Kent Postma, he's here. Uh, he'd be happy to be around in the lobby afterwards. You can get connected and we'll kind of let you know more information about that. Many people are already on that team and, and they kind of help set the pace of the vision for the rest of the church. And it's, it's a great opportunity. But really legacy is what's gonna be here, what remains long after we are gone. And I begin to approach this uh, from this phrase that I, I picked up from a, a guy that was a businessman that's now in ministry. And he said, you know, when I was in business, everybody wanted to know what the ROI was. What's my return on investment? Like, what am I gonna get back for this investment? How many of you guys ever bought a stock or maybe you bought something and you go look at it every single day? Like, you're, you're paying attention to it. You're watching, oh, I'm up today. Oh, I'm down. Wonder what's gonna happen in the election, this. I mean, you're watching this stuff all the time. Well, what I begin to understand is that the best place to invest is in people. Well, let that sit for a second. The best place to invest is in people. And so I begin to think in our legacy season, what can we do to invest in people? What is the best way to do that? And so we have a, a, a kind of a layout of a design that we usually use. And I wanna kind of let you guys in on that in this family meeting. And we call them lanes. There are different lanes in the legacy season that people get behind to be able to move the vision of the church forward in these two lanes. The first lane we call church on the move. Church on the move is something that God spoke to us about moving the vision of the church forward. That is everything from the office project that you just saw. Just so you know, the office is completely bought and paid for in full. Come on somebody, done, all right? Thank you for your generosity. We also have a piece of land that sits behind that. We're gonna talk more about that in a second, uh, about uh, retiring the debt on the land. We bought that land for $2.5 million. Uh, the value has actually gone up since we've purchased it due to some other construction in the area. Uh, but what we, what we did is we were able to put down um, our, and pay down uh, through the last two years, maybe two and a half years now, uh, a little over a million dollars on that piece of land. Come on, put your hands together. We're so excited about what God's done. And so there's still a balance on that land. That's one of the things we're kind of believing God for. And we're gonna talk about that here in just a second. And then lane number two is really my favorite. That's missions. Everybody say missions. Acts chapter one, verse number eight, it says this, that you will be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. We interpret that as local, national, and global missions. As a church, uh, we, as a, as, a, as a floor, give away 10% of all the money that comes into the church to missions. Just so you know, every year that number's been closer to 20%, and it is my heart's desire that it goes up from there every single year that we can make an impact in the world right here from Friendswood, Texas. Now, there's great things involved, and I don't have a whole lot of time here, but I do wanna just kinda share in the missions lane, let me talk about missions, just real quick, local, 
if you just kind of focus on the screen, I'm going to go through a couple of screens real quick. Uh, so we support Young Life here in Friendswood. Yeah, I know that's been impact. Shallow Ministries, that's men's restoration from addiction. Kids Harbor is a foster home down in Liverpool, Texas. We partner with them. Hope Village here in town, we, we get together and partner with them. We do events for them and with them. Uh, Christian Helping Hands is a food pantry right here in Pearland that gives out food. Uh, Orphan Grain Train is a donations and supplies. Just last week, we packed this truck full because of your giving, and we drove that to the Asheville, North Carolina area, and we're able to give out supplies. Right here from Friendswood, Texas, because of what you did. How many of you know, we, we know what it feels like to go through a hurricane. And when somebody else is going through a Harvey of their own, uh, we wanna make sure that we're helping them. So national missions, let's just kind of go through these real quick. Uh, let's look at the first one. I think we have uh, ARC, the Association of Related Churches. This is church planting. Do you know that you're sitting in a church today that was planted? And we got connected with this organization and we were, had this dream to plant the church and we found this organization and they had a 93% success rate. I'm like, well, let's don't reinvent the wheel. What do they know that we don't know? So we got connected with them and we, we heard that if you raise X amount of dollars, they would actually match those dollars and all they ask is that in your missions budget in the future that you pay it forward. And so I thought, man, this is awesome. And they had this process and so we believe in church planning because somebody believed in us. They had started off in 2001 with a big audacious vision and dream. I mean, you know, God visions are crazy. Like if, you're, if people aren't making fun of your vision, then you're probably, it's not big enough. <laughs> I'm gonna let that sink in for a second, all right? Because I know probably some of y'all are making fun of my vision right now, all right? But here's the thing I want you to see is so very important is that through church planting, they had this audacious vision to plant 2,000 life-giving churches in America. We are, as of February 2018, we were number 761. Yeah, I love that. Meaning other churches in America, there's that many that have been planted before us. Now they're up to 1,175 churches planted in America just in the last, I think, 15 years, something like that. So very, very important work going on there. Yeah, let's give the Lord a hand clap. I love that. Convoy of Hope, disaster relief. Uh, we're on the ground. The two hurricanes that came through, I know we took a truck, but we also sent trucks through your giving and Convoy of Hope. They're always first on the ground, and that's a great thing. Global Missions is next. Uh, let's go to the, the first slide there. Biblica, Bible Translation and Distribution. Uh, this is an area that, that really, Kelly, you wanna talk just a little bit about this? Just, we just came back from this, this event last night, late last night, and this ministry has a, a vision to eliminate Bible poverty by 2030. The crazy thing about that is that um, they have grouped together with other ministries around the country. Now they're not doing it individually. Now everybody's working together. And it used to take years to do one translation. There's still over a billion people on the planet that do not have the Bible in their known heart language. And so we're trying to partner with them to do that. They do crazy stuff now because AI has accelerated this process like nobody's business meaning that we can translate Bibles much, much quicker. Well, we met a, a guy, just real quick, share that story because we got to get moving. So we met um, a fellow by the name of um, Tom. He, we're going to show that picture, but don't take out your cameras. Do not take a picture of Tom because um, he, his life is on the line. He is, has planted over 12,000 underground secret churches. The secret police are on him. He's on the radar. So we, we want to protect him. But he, what he is doing is amazing. He used to have to smuggle in actual Bibles. Yep. And every time the that, that, they would, that they would do this, he, I mean, can you imagine the fear in his life? Now they do it on an SD card. Now they're doing it on SD cards, and, and they're smuggling these into China. China is still does not accept Christianity as a religion. And so they're under great persecution. Um, he, we, we actually asked him, what can we pray for? And his, his number one prayer, not is for protection for his family. That's what I think I thought it would be. But it is for more Bibles so that, that can be translated so that they can, people can read from their heart language. Can you imagine reading a Bible that was not in your language? I mean, that would be so difficult, and that's what they've had to do. Yep. So being able to get Bibles into their hands. But you want to tell more about the SD cards? Well, I think just the SD cards are so cool because they're duplicatable once you get them in the country. 
for 20 bucks, you can, you can get a, a translation. It has it in their, the native language, which is more than one in China. Uh, and then they have it uh, audio version and the written version on the SD card that can go into a phone or a computer. And then they're able to pull that up. There's also study guides in there to be able to teach them discipleship and things like that. So for 20 bucks, able to get an SD card in there. This is what I want you to know. We committed just yesterday $25,000 from the church. That's 1,250 SD cards that are gonna go into China because of your generosity. Thank you so much. Uh, here's another cool thing. I'm talking about taking SD cards with drones and dropping them into North Korea. Come on, somebody. I mean, this is crazy stuff. So anyway. those are the things Biblica, Biblica is doing. So we are passionate about them. And one last thing, one of the things that we want you to know as your pastors that every missions organization that we partner with, we, we know that we're entrusted with your your money. And when you give into missions, you want to know what percentage of that dollar is actually going into the field. And Biblica, 100% of what you give through High Point Church goes straight to Biblica and into Bible translation that goes into their hands. The, the NIV translation of the Bible override funds all of their overhead. So we want you to know that. that every, and not just Biblica, Convoy of Hope is 93 cents on the dollar. Yep. Every missions organization, that's why we, we want to encourage you give your missions dollars through high point church because we have prayed and we have vetted each mission partner yeah. that you give to i want you to, to view the missions program here as like a mutual fund for missions giving it's like whenever we give to here any dollar that you give a portion of that is going out to all these missionaries let's just go through the list real quick here uh, we can skip past that verse so operation christmas child told you about that already what's next susmanas extenditas that's an orphanage in mexico that we support we do pastor training in Guatemala. Just got back from here two weeks ago. Uh, also, uh, another orphanage in, in Guatemala uh, that we support there. Uh, another, a girl's home called ICOM in Guatemala. Uh, Vapor Ministries. This is water outreach and gospel connection in Haiti and East Africa. Uh, in Ghani Yami Children's Home in South Africa. Uh, this is a great place, and this is the church that we give through to that mission is uh, Open Skies Church. And then uh, one of my, my favorite is... Uh, this is not South Africa, that's actually Israel. And so we got that slide wrong, but that's Dugit. Uh, and they actually reach, uh, that's Jewish evangelism. I mean, there's lots of, of, of Messianic Jews uh, that actually know about Jesus and they're spreading the message of Christ to the Orthodox Jewish people. And uh, the Bible actually says it's to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. So we believe heavily in that. All right, well, now let's talk about church on the move. How many already see what we're gonna do as a church? Come on, somebody. All right, so Church on the Move, what we would like to do, let me kind of just show you a few things, and I have somewhere, oh, look what they gave me from 2010, a laser pointer. Okay, so come on, somebody. This is what the building's gonna look like on that property, so very excited about that. We're proud of the design. We're super happy that it doesn't look like anything else in town, but it speaks excellence, and it speaks like we are here to stay. Let's keep going, another angle of this building, kind of from this angle, uh, kids wing over here, that's a coffee shop right there. And this is obviously the auditorium and uh, other classrooms and things. Uh, so you can kind of see the layout here as you walk in kind of the front door. Lobby is this white area. Uh, this is the kids wing, uh, elementary here. Uh, this is all pre-K back here, 800 seats. This is stadium seats in the back, all complete LED wall. Uh, we've got growth track, we've got big bathrooms. Come on, somebody. Uh, we, got a, we got a coffee shop right here in the front. Eventually, we'll have a, an office wing over here, but we have the office up front right now, so don't need that yet. Uh, let's go to the next one. This is a future phase outside. I don't know why they put weeds in the grass, but somebody did. Uh, but we're gonna do AstroTurf, not weeds in the grass, so it's not gonna look like that. But we have an outdoor amphitheater with food trucks over here. We can do outdoor events and things out behind the church. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is the amphitheater right here. And then you can see the, the uh, grassy area and the food trucks over there. It's behind the church, 528 uh, is up front. Uh, pickleball courts, uh, volleyball court back here for the teenagers and anybody else that wants to play some pickleball. Uh, the back of the building at the bottom of the slide. I know it's kind of hard to see with the drums there, but the, this is the back of the building. This is a gymnasium right here for basketball teams to be able to use. Also an outreach center to be able to do food distribution. Uh, this is the outdoor area that's the, the, um, the grass and then the food trucks over here on this side parking around. This is the volleyball court. This is the pickleball courts. The back left on the creek back here, that's a wedding chapel back there in the back corner. 
So if you have dreams of getting married one day, maybe that's the spot for you. Uh, building complete with the youth wing. We're gonna do a youth wing over here as an expansion. They'll use the main sanctuary in the beginning, but have an eventual youth wing over here to expand the kids' part out. That's what the building looks like, guys. How many, how many of y'all love it? Y'all like it? All right. Now, let's take in the sticker shock. I'm just kidding. Our next step, so we have some legacy goals. And legacy is between now and the end of the year, like I said. So I don't want you to think about anything that you see on the big numbers on the bottom on the right, but just lane one, church on the move, lane two is missions. To be able to pay the land off, we still owe 1475. As I said, we put about a million dollars paid down on that already. And so I wanna give you the opportunity to be able to see uh, how much we still have on that. Then we also are believing God for $225,000 for missions to be able to, to, uh, to, be able to fund that, that, uh, those ministries that you just saw for the next year. And so that's a total of $1.7 million between now and the end of the year. Now, I know many of you guys are thinking that seems like a lofty goal. It is a lofty goal, but if it's not a God-sized goal, it's, then God's not involved. And, and I want you to know that I have faith I'm okay standing up here and, and people thinking, that dude's crazy. But I do know that if we push out an empty vessel that God will fill it up. And so we're pushing out empty vessels, that's what we're doing. So believing God for that to come in by the end of the year. I did put lane three up there this year. That's just future seed money for the building, which is the $15 million that's gonna, that's gonna take. And we're gonna launch that, hopefully a campaign for that next year. So don't think about that now. Right now, it's debt elimination and missions between now and the end of the year. And you say, Pastor Scott, how could we possibly get to that? Well, kind of came up with a little chart here. Again, we're looking for really 100% participation. We're not looking for equal giving. We're looking for equal sacrifice. And I just believe if God, if everybody will just do something, then I believe that we could actually begin to reach these goals and the vision that God has for High Point Church. And so it just kind of put this chart together that, Maybe one person could get half, give half a million, two could give 250, maybe three could give 100, four give 50, four 25, five 10,000, five 5,000, and then many gifts below 5,000. Let me just say right now, if these numbers are overwhelming to you, don't let them be. This is what our prayer is, is that we will never ask you for money. We're not passing the bucket today. All we do is we ask you to ask God what your part is. That's what we call an empty vessel. And then we let God speak to the hearts of people and he begins to fill it up. God gives the vision and we have the opportunity to be able to set the pace of that vision. And so I wanna just kind of keep this before you guys. This is kind of our goal for that. And I believe that, that God's gonna do some great things. How many of y'all can, can agree with me on that? Amen, amen. We're also asking, we're gonna move into water baptism, but we are asking you to pray about this. You know, the Bible says that when we all come together corporately, anything we ask, when it's hooked up to his kingdom, he will give us. So please pray for this 1.7 million. This is more than I can even imagine. I mean, we freaked out at 400,000 when we first started the church. So it is a big vessel we're pushing out, but please pray with us that we meet this so we can take that and go into our building fund next year. And most importantly, fund all these missions that we have such a heart for. We all believe with us for that. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Well, um, I wanna just kind of visit with you for a second. We're gonna have a time of prayer and the people that are gonna get baptized, they're gonna be moving here in just a moment. But we talked about vision for your life also. And uh, I want you to know that God has a vision for your life. And uh, if you look all throughout the word of God, he, he kind of lays out uh, how he moves people along on a spiritual journey. The first one that I think is most important is that we all need to be in relationship. We need to know who God is. I mean, you know that it's not about rules. It's about being in relationship with God. And when you're in relationship with God, you begin to have conversations with him and you talk to him, but it starts with a heart posture of full surrender to the Lord. What you're about to witness is people in their life that are going public with their faith and they made this choice. They said yes to God, full surrender. God, you can have my life. I surrender it to you. They're going public with their faith. And man, we're gonna celebrate with them here in just a moment. I also believe that the next step on the journey after you come into relationship with God is that you have to get freedom from your past. Listen to me just for a second. We're gonna, we're gonna do baptism, but listen to me. Everybody here is dealing with something. You've 
heard my story many, many times about the, 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 the dad hurt that I went through, difficult things that I had to overcome in my life to even be standing here before you. The Bible says who the sun sets free is free indeed. And if you're bound up by something or you're, you're, you're enslaved to something, maybe it has to do with your choices, but maybe it's just a result of the hand of cards that you were dealt. God wants you to be free. He wants you to have freedom in your life. Then I want you to know the next step on that journey is to discover your purpose. Do you know that God, he made you unique, made you a certain way? Like he wired you and you think to yourself, I don't see things like everybody else sees things. I, 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 I kind of see, I'm, I'm a little bit different. Well, the reason you think that about yourself is because God made you unique. And what you think maybe makes you different, God says, I made you that way for a reason. And when you begin to discover your purpose and you begin to be joined together with other believers, that's what you call the church, the body of Christ. And everybody here has something that is part of this body. And we begin to discover our purpose. You know, it said that almost 87% of people live and die and never discover why God put them on this earth. What if we could change that? What if we could help you discover what your spiritual gifts are placed on the inside of you by God? Well, as a church, we have a process to kind of help you. It's called growth track and kind of a discipleship track of getting connected to the church and learning more about yourself and so that you can kind of begin to discover that purpose on the inside of you. And then ultimately, I think the last part of the journey, and, it, and this part never ends, it's ongoing forever, because we all have a next step, is what I, we like to call making a difference. The world calls it transcendence, the highest level of living. It's when I begin to not live for myself anymore and live my life for somebody else. Well, I want to encourage you that that didn't come from the world. That came from God. And God says you will be fulfilled. You will have fulfillment in life. And so many people chase so many things trying to fill this void. And ultimately, it just comes down to can I make a difference in the life of somebody else? This is what I want you to know. You can. God loves you. Don't disqualify yourself. Get connected to a good church like this one and say, God, use me. And just... The crazy thing is he's actually already designed you. In fact, the Bible says this. He created your purpose and then he made you to fulfill that purpose. Meaning that he cares so much about you, he put those things on the inside of you so that you could be a part of a bigger picture. And that's called making a difference. And so I wanna pray for you just today. If you don't mind, just bow your head and close your eyes and Father, I thank you right now, God, for each person that's here. I thank you for every life. I thank you, Father, for these going public with their faith. And God, I thank you for the ones that are sitting in their chair right now and they are thinking to themselves, man, I wish I knew God. And I wish I had some freedom. And I wish I knew my purpose. I wonder if it'd be possible for me to make a difference. God, I pray right now, God, that people that need to know you, that right now they would just cry out to you and say, Jesus right there in their seat, just, just where they are, just where they can hear it, God. They just begin to say, Jesus, I need you. Father, I thank you right now, God, that you would begin to set people free, breaking chains of addiction and bondage off of people. I thank you for that. God, I thank you for purpose. Speak purpose into people's lives. God, I thank you that we will all begin to make a difference. God, I thank you for that right now. In Jesus' name. And everybody said... Come on, everybody said. Thanks for joining us today. If you've been encouraged by our ministry, we would love for you to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to help us continue spreading the message of Jesus all around the world through generosity, or you'd like more information on our Sunday services, you can visit us online at myhighpointchurch.com, and you can always follow us on social media at myhighpointchurch.com.